Hi, I'm Brad Rowe, Master's in Public Policy candidate, graduating in 2013. Well, about 10 years ago, I started working with the homeless population here in Los Angeles, and one of the commonalities that I noticed and in their stories I was hearing over and over um, I joined a gang when I was 13, I started prostituting when I was 14, uh, I left my parents' house when I was 16, and I had this eureka moment where I realized that there was really this period of time that uh, we might want to take uh, a closer look at that uh, has an imprint and affects these, uh, these kids' lives for, for the rest of their lives. And so having the opportunity to work in educational attainment to see how many more kids we can get to uh, to graduate or to be career ready, to be college ready, um, really is one of the major keys to uh, helping these uh, children live productive lives and to be able to uh, avoid a life of, of poverty and, and, uh, and struggle. So I got involved with the, uh, with the United Way of Greater Los Angeles through the Rosenfield Fellowship that I was awarded this last year and it's given me the opportunity to really get involved in the policy making side of uh, what affects our kids, largely here at uh, LEUSD at our local school district here in Los Angeles, uh, where there are seven to 800,000 kids uh, who are working to graduate, not drop out, uh, have great educational attainment, to uh, have higher levels of proficiency in math and English. And we're working to try and make sure that the state and the district and the city and the federal government does everything that they can to make sure that these kids, these teachers, and these principals have everything that they need to help these kids do the best that they can. Haiti is an incredible place with incredible potential and obviously with an enormous amount of challenges. And when I was given the opportunity to come down and spend a little bit of time working with some of the Haitian relief workers at the JPHRO, there are 15,000 residents and there are almost 100 employees, uh, many or most of which are now uh, have been transitioned to uh, Haitian national positions. So to have the chance to come down and work with those employees to help them deal with some of the struggles that they're having personally while they're doing this work, um, I thought would be a really gratifying experience. So passing on some of the things that I've learned about stress management and goal setting and relapse prevention were really pertinent issues uh, for these workers personally. Uh, you know, we asked the question, who's taking care of the caregivers? To have a chance just to discuss them uh, in a group setting and for me to be able to facilitate that conversation was uh, was really rewarding and now for all the differences that we have between uh, sort of a wealthier nation in America and a poor nation like Haiti um, when I'm sitting there talking about education with these guys you know we're coming down to the same issues you know quality teachers in front of the classroom uh, trying to make sure that the kids have all the resources that they need how to deal with parent engagement uh, how to get your communities involved in your schools. I mean, I felt like I was talking about uh, Los Angeles area education. It seems that that was a fairly universal thing. Uh, I had spent uh, some time uh, writing screenplays and stories and short stories of my travels and trials and tribulations and wanted to uh, try my hand as a screenwriter out in, in Los Angeles. So I moved out here in 95 and um, got a job at United Talent Agency working in their script library, pushing the uh, pushing the trade card, handing out trades to all the agents. And interestingly enough, uh, after taking some acting classes that I thought would be useful for me as a writer and just, you know, kind of a little bit of fun, uh, some of the younger agents uh, took pity on me and started throwing my uh, headshots in with uh, some of the other actual clients that the agency had. And lo and behold, I got, got a call to, uh, to come and do some auditions and ultimately ended up uh, landing a role in a really small independent film uh, that went to Sundance that year. From that point on, you know, much of the last 15 to 17 years uh, working in front of the camera, uh, working on independent films, network television shows, miniseries, um, and uh, just having a really good time doing something that, I, as, as it turned out, I, I really loved and had a knack for and enjoyed. So. Look, Allison hit me. Well, like abandoning your family? She's not your family. Her baby, that's not your family! That is my family, Dad! We're yeah, your family! It was really important for me to come to the Luskin School of Public Affairs and, and, and do this work. I, I really wanted to feel like I was making a change in my community, making a change for, uh, for my state, for my country. Um, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to um, having a wife and a 10-year-old son who I just want to, I want to leave him the best world 
that I can. And I was really, uh, I was really nervous about how much putting all this effort into going to graduate school and trying to balance life out would be while I was here. But I found that the coursework and the professors and uh, the fellowship and everything else that I've been able to do here has been so energizing that it's actually added on to my level of, of energy and ability to do other things in life. And um, it's just been an incredible experience and I've learned so much and I really do feel like uh, when I'm done here that I'm going to have the skills that I need to, to really make a difference.